Good evening, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for November 1, 2023. And in the news this evening, supermarket owners robbed of $500,000 in St. Anne. A businessman and a woman were robbed of over half a million dollars at a gunpoint in Monique St. Anne on Tuesday evening. Reports are that about 6.30 p.m., the man and the woman were at a supermarket they operate when they were held up by three armed men who had traveled to the location in two vehicles, a Toyota Axio and a Toyota Pro Box. The robbers then escaped. The Ontario CIB is investigating the incident. Meanwhile, residents have expressed the concern. Them things that make people afraid. No way in a Jamaica no safe. Whether it be killing, robbery or whatever. Just pure crime. A resident who identified herself as a marshal said. Since the start of the year, St. Anne has recorded some 55 robberies. Plea and a case management hearing for policeman Noel Maitland delayed. Constable Noel Maitland, who is implicated in the murder of his missing girlfriend, Donna Lee Donaldson, was today further remanded after his plea and the case management hearing was pushed back to November 15. However, the plea and the case management hearing, which was scheduled to start today in the Home Circuit Court, suffered a delay after the prosecution mistakenly had another date for the start and as a result was unprepared. The court was told further that the indictment was not settled and that the judge's orders were not yet complied with. Prior to today's postponement, attorney at law Chadrick Berry, while noting that he understands the constraints, expressed a concern about his client's health. But Justice Vinnett Graham Allen reminded Berry of the purpose of a renewed bail application. The judge assured the lawyer that Maitland's medical journal will be available on November 15. But Berry, in pressing his case, said he was greatly concerned for his client's health as he has observed the patches on his arms, legs, and neck. The lawyer then apologized for Midland, who was sporting a gray t-shirt, white shorts, and navy blue slippers. But the judge refused his apology, stating that the real reason for Midland's attire in court was to display his rashes. Barry also complained that his client had not received medical attention and that his complaints fell on deaf ears. The defendant was subsequently remanded. In addition to murder, Midland, who has been in custody for over a year, is also charged with preventing the lawful burial of a corpse. Donaldson was last seen at Midland's New Kingston apartment on July 11, 2022. She was reported missing on July 13. The police had indicated that investigations concluded that Donaldson was killed on July 12 between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Cops seized pistol ammo found in knapsack. An operation by the Spanish Town Police on June Spen Lane in St. Catherine on Monday led to the seizure of a semi-automatic pistol and 10 rounds of ammunition. Reports are that about 10.30 a.m., a team of lawmen acting on information conducted an operation at a premises in the community. Two men were seen at the address and a search was conducted in which a star 9mm semi-automatic pistol and a magazine containing 10 and 9 mm rounds of ammunition were found in a knapsack that was being carried by one of the men. It was seized and the men were taken into custody. Their identities are being withheld pending an investigation. Disgruntled dental surgeons protest the mistreatment warn of mass exodus. Disgruntled dental surgeons gather the outside the Ministry of Finance in Kingston on Wednesday as their industrial action against the alleged mistreatment by the government entered its second day. Among the complaints of the dental surgeons is their remuneration under the new compensation scheme, with a representative asserting that mistreatment will only encourage them to leave our island. The dental surgeons shouted in unison messages such as dentist needs a livable wage and no discrimination against the dentist. Jesse James Clark, a junior shadow spokesperson on health for the opposition People's National Party, said the protest is unfortunate, adding that the ministers of health and finance 
should be very concerned about the matter. Okay, so I'm here in support of the dental surgeons who are striking because um, the Minister of Finance has not responded to a request that they had for a meeting from April this year. Um, it's about their compensation package and there, there are some issues with it with the offer that, they are being, that have been made out to them and they want to discuss it further the ministry. But the minister refused to respond to having a meeting with them from April this year. So they are now demonstrating to see if they could get the attention of the public and the minister to intervene so that they can um, come to some sort of, um, of agreement. It's unfortunate that it had to get to this point where they have to demonstrate. And you see this being repeated in many of the groups in healthcare where they have to demonstrate first before any type of attention is, is, is given to them. And that is unfortunate. We need to be more proactive. The ministry needs to be more proactive. The Minister of Health and the Minister of Finance, they need to be more proactive and to meet with these people because they're already in short supply and we can't continue to mistreat them because that's only going to encourage them to leave our island. I'm seeking for the minister to, to meet with them and to hear their suggestion and what they are requesting in terms of their compensation package and to make them feel comfortable in terms of what they're offering to them in way of their pay. So the minister needs to um, intervene urgently and to meet with them so that they don't have the industrial action continuing for a third day because the public is being inconvenienced and the, the Minister of Health should be concerned and the Minister of Finance should be concerned about it. So what you find, all your dental surgeons are here, so you, you won't have any dental surgeons now in the health system. So over the last, well, we're in the day two now of the industrial action, you won't have any dental surgeons um, offering any services, services right across the island because they are here demonstrating. So I'm asking the Minister to ensure that and you have persons who need urgent surgeries to be done and they are here, they are here now because of the whole body they are being treated. So you can't blame the dental surgeon for striking because they have families too. They have persons that they have responsibility for and they have to take care of themselves. These are young people. If you look at them, the oldest person out there is probably in their early 30s. So we can't continue to treat our young people like this and our young professionals like this. Doctors at the Port Maria Hospital on sick out. Medical doctors employed to the Port Maria Hospital in St. Mary have reportedly called in sick. This is reportedly due to them being overworked. Opposition spokesman on health, Dr. Maurice Guy, told the news that there is now a delay in attending to patients. The hospital has not been um, allocated the requisite number of doctors to work. The establishment calls for, I think, either 10 or 11, and uh, currently there are only five doctors who are on duty. So basically, well, and the team. So basically, the SMO is the one right now who is running the hospital solely. There are doctors who are awaiting contracts from the government. And you will recall recently, the minister announced that there is going to be um, an increase in the number of cadre of doctors, that the establishment has been increased by the Ministry of Finance, and that as of two weekends ago, that they were supposed to be ads in the newspaper to attract doctors. I know as a fact that doctors have applied prior to this two weeks ago and have not been called for interview and are still awaiting jobs. So the fact is that the ministry needs to act with greater alacrity. You cannot afford for the suffering people of this country to continue to suffer more because of ineptitude. When the news visited the Port Maria Hospital, a woman who brought her father for treatment said she was informed that no doctor was on duty. Okay, my father to get some medication and nurse told me that after I do a vital that the nurse said um, the doctor is not available at this time and she can't tell me when he will be available. That's what I get so far. Then I hear that they are in a meeting. So then just tell me the truth to her. Go on. Simple as that. Jamaican drowns in Cayman. A Jamaican man drowned in waters of Georgetown in the Cayman Islands last week. Police revealed the identity of 27-year-old Raheem Tariq Barrett in a press release on Tuesday. It is reported that members of the Cayman Islands Fire Service recovered Barrett's body on Sunday, October 22. Port Authority staff had alerted emergency services to a possible person in distress in the harbor shortly before 11.15 p.m. the previous evening. Two charged with the murder of G.C. Foster College VP remanded. The two men charged for the murder of National Cricket Administrator and the Vice Principal of G.C. Foster College, Games Williams, were remanded when they appeared before the St. Catherine Parish Court on Friday. The men, Odin Watson and Jerome Hills, were remanded until December 18.
They were charged last month for the October 6 shooting death of the 55-year-old sports administrator outside a medical facility in Portmore, St. Catherine. Parliamentary Committee accepts a proposal for $12 million threshold for statutory declarations. The Integrity Commission Oversight Committee has accepted a recommendation to increase to $12 million the statutory declaration threshold for public sector workers. The recommendation was made by the Integrity Commission due to the difficulty it is having examining declarations, some of which have been outstanding since 2018. Committee Chair Edmund Bartlett said the proposal was being approved with conditions, including the clearing of the backlog. We are in a position then, by consensus, to accept the recommendation, but to indicate very strongly the need for greater vigor, rigor in a deeper dive into finding a solution which will enable them to effectively complete the examination of all declarations and to avoid the situation that now obtains where a vast majority of the declarants are literally in trepidation as to whether their declaration is a seen and more importantly when they will be in fact signed off on. If approved by Parliament, the move should bring the number of public sector workers required to file statutory declarations down to 10,000 from the current 40,000. At the present, all parliamentarians and the public officials in receipt of total annual gross emoluments of $3.5 million or more are required to file statutory declarations. Despite the acceptance of the recommendation, Opposition Committee member Julian Robinson believes that the number of declarations expected will still be too high and they should be further revised. Mr. Robinson has recommended that the Integrity Commission reviews some of the categories of public sector workers who currently have to file to determine whether they should continue doing so. So, for example, I raised the issue of whether every member of the JDF needs to file. And I'm not convinced that they do. I think maybe um, officer level and above would need to, but I, I don't think every member of the JDF, um, in many cases not interfacing with the public, should be required to file. I also question, as an example, does every doctor in the public service need to file? Again, I don't think so.